I'm Bill, I'm with Kelly Moto TV. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the garage, and welcome back to the 2021 Ducati Panigale V2 is up on the lift for part number two of the brake system. Now, sorry it's taken so long, unfortunately, back order parts, the Jet Prime uh, controller was on back order, but today we have a full upper brake control uh, replacement along with the throttle uh, stuff here and uh, as you guys already know we've already completed the lower half of this so we uh, installed the Brembo T-Drive rotors along with the Brembo Stylema calipers and Ferrodo brake pads and then what we're doing is now we're going to be replacing the uh, Stockmaster with the uh, RCS 17 and then all of this here we're actually uninstalling all of this and making the Jet Prime just one. Now the reason why we have to do that is the new master actually has to be pushed over because the brake lever won't hit or will hit here on the new RCS 17. So this has all got to go over. Then we have to finagle the, um, the uh, reservoir and everything. So it's a little bit of a task, so stick around, grab some coffee, and uh, let's go ahead and start tearing up the top side of this, get everything torn down, figure out how everything goes back on. Um, hopefully we don't run into too many issues, but uh, I think we have everything to com complete the top part of the brake system. So let's go ahead and get the chassis cam on, and uh, let's start working up top and uh, see how long this takes us to finish the master and jet prime controller and uh, bar and lever uh, guard here on the uh, Panigale V2. All right, you guys, so here is everything. Uh, we have the RCS 17. Um, it is not a Corsa Corta, it's just a regular 17, but you can um, adjust it. Uh, you just can't adjust the pressures. And then we've got a nice performance technology uh, bar end uh, lever guard here, which is very nice. And then the Jet Prime uh, system. Now, the reason why you need this is on the uh, handlebars, the master uh, of that is shorter so it actually hits the back of the stock throttle so what you need to do is you need to compact this all down into one unit opposed to the two units so we're actually taking this and we're compacting it down into one unit which will allow us to take the mass the master and move it over slightly so our brake lever doesn't hit back here so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and drain the fluids we're going to end up having to flush the system anyways so what we're going to do is pull all the fluid out of here with the uh, siphon and then we're just going to go ahead and crack the bleeder down here and we're just going to go ahead and pull all the fluid out that way when we break this nut loose down here for the master uh, there's no oil and uh, then what we're going to do is then pull the ignition switch and everything off and run that the cable comes all the way down here to the white cable so this is the white cable is what you're going to need to uh, do this so you are going to have to remove this side fairing by the way um, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and take the throttles and uh, the electronic throttle which will be basically in this spacer so you're going to see this is actually going to come apart and then slide over that throttle and then basically everything is just in one. I don't know why Ducati didn't do that, but uh, it's gonna look way better. So let's go ahead and drain the system from all of its fluid. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take our power bleeder and just actually suck out all of the fluid out of the reservoir, which is just gonna help us with the mess. Then what we're gonna do is, being that we're gonna, we're gonna have to bleed the system anyways, let's go ahead and Hook this up to our master or our caliper down here, and let's go ahead and crack this open and just actually bleed out some of the fluid out of here. All right, so now with the fluid removed, what we're going to go ahead and do is just wrap a towel down below here because what we're going to do is now remove the master. That's gonna be our first thing that we're gonna remove. So we're gonna need, I believe it's a five or six millimeter here, but we're gonna go ahead and crack the, um, the fluid line down here that actually takes us to the ABS system in the front calipers. So go ahead and crack that nut loose, which I believe it's going to be a 12 millimeter. 
and then we can remove the uh, upper part of the master. And then we should also have, yep, we should have this plug here, which goes down below, which we're gonna have to get out, which is our brake switch. So go ahead and tuck your towel in here and go ahead and remove this bottom bolt. All right, so first go ahead and crack the 12 millimeter loose. So you're gonna go towards the back of the bike and you're gonna get some fluid loss. Even though we bled the fluid out, there's still gonna be a little bit left. So go ahead and remove this bolt and the banjo bolt. And we'll go ahead and set this aside. And then now what we're gonna do is now we've got that loose, we're gonna go ahead into this little bird's nest and you'll see that there's a, a little holder here and a couple zip ties. We're gonna have to get to these zip ties and cut them off. I already cut one of them off. So, because we're gonna end up having to get here also, not only with the brake switch, but with the controller. So go ahead and snip all of these and get these wires loose so we can pull out our brake switch. All right, with that all untucked, we're gonna take our five millimeter and go ahead and remove the two bolts you'll see here that hold the master in position. So go ahead and remove bolt number one and bolt number two. All right, and with those bolts removed, you'll see the only thing that's holding us is our uh, cable for the brake switch. So let's get that there. Let's go ahead and pull this out. And you'll see we've got uh, it all clear here. Now go ahead and find this cable and chase this cable back, which it looks like it's in the bird's nest. So let's go ahead and dig out the cable and find the brake switch cable. All right, so you'll notice right here, this is our brake cable, so we've dug it out. So let's go ahead and pull this out, grab a little pick and lift this up. Should then remove it. And then now we can pull the cable through, which you can see that's basically the only thing that's holding us in here. So go ahead and pull this cable through. And let's take a look because I'm not sure. I think we're gonna end up having to use this switch again. So let's see, because we've got a brake switch here, but it is a little bit different. So let's see if we can pop this switch off and use that switch on the new one or if we have to splice this. All right, so with a little screwdriver, I've got a little pick one. We're just gonna actually put it in here and actually pop this off. They're just little mushroom pieces that uh, hold that in. So now this basically this master we're gonna set aside and let's go ahead and take the brake switch over and they look they look pretty damn similar. Actually, I think they're the same. So let's see the RCS 17. You'll see that it goes down and let's push that in all the way, nice and tight. So it's mushroomed back in and let's hear for the click. There we go. Hear the click, that's your brake. So when you pull the brake, click, brake lights on. So very perfect, so that's actually perfect because um, it avoids us having to splice anything. So you guys don't need to splice anything here. So uh, let's go ahead and get the caps removed for the master. And actually uh, we're not going to mount the master yet, but what I will show you is the issue that we have with the master and the mounting. Let's go ahead and get these bolts removed. So as you guys can see, once this is mounted, even tight, tight, you can see it hits right here and we can't put a longer lever on it. So what we have to do is we have to eliminate this, mount it there, so now we don't have that issue. So let's go ahead and set this aside. And now let's go ahead and start removing the ignition switch, which is this cable, which then we go all the way around. Actually, that's our throttle. This is our throttle. And then this is our ignition. So our ignition comes around and our ignition is right here. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this one out. And this white one is our ignition switch. So let's go ahead and grab our pick and go ahead and get this removed. 
So this is the all of the ignition switch and everything. So we're gonna go bottom side and I believe it's a couple screwdrivers or it may be maybe a couple small Allens. Yep, it's actually uh, like a two and a half Allen. So go ahead and take one and two and remove the switch. All right, so you guys can see we've got this removed. You'll see uh, I've started to pull this pin out. Ugh. I thought I had it all the way. There we go, wiggle. So there's a pin that actually is mounted into the master here. So you can see the pin goes in here, which keeps the master in its correct position. We are gonna have to remove that pin and then go ahead um, and just set this aside with the master. And now that we are done with that, we're gonna go ahead and I don't know that we need to unplug this, but let's go ahead and unscrew the backing because the um, the throttle, I believe, we're just gonna cap over. We don't even need to move the throttle, I believe. So let's go ahead and unscrew the back. And I believe this is gonna come out and we're just gonna be able to keep this all intact. All right, so we've got three screws removed from the back and then you're gonna have to snip this zip tie here and then the back cover is gonna come off. I believe we're reutilizing this. If I'm not mistaken, it looks like correct. So we're gonna go down there. So it looks like, yeah, we're gonna reuse this. And so set this one, set this one aside. And then go ahead and gently remove the back cover. I think, uh, bummer, it is. So there's this little three prong screwdriver you're gonna need. So let's dig into, I've got this nifty little Ryobi um, kit that's got a whole bunch of bits and I bet it's gonna have that little three-sided screwdriver. All right, so you can see it's a little three-sided Phillips head. Lucky I have a bit. Um, but uh, that's gonna have to be removed. If you guys don't have one, you're gonna have to get that three-sided bit to remove this. Now, uh, with that removed, we're gonna go ahead and stream all the way to the backside here to the big cable. And we're gonna go ahead and get this pulled loose. And go ahead and pull this. All right, so with the big gray cable loose, we're gonna go ahead and feed this back through Careful around the um, uh, the throttle, okay? So let's try not to kind of get a firm hand on that. Go ahead and feed this through. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull out the back of the stock one, okay? And uh, if you guys don't already have them, I really highly recommend the throttle spacers. You can see here, there's no play in these throttles. So Ducati leaves a little bit of play. I'm not sure the reasoning people say, oh, so it's whatever. Um, I don't know, but we have had throttle spacers in here from the beginning. So um, let's go ahead and set this aside. And now what we're gonna do is go ahead and grab our uh, new controller and let's pull off the back bolts. They look like they are four millimeters. Go ahead and remove the back bolts. Indeed, they are four millimeters. And now what we're gonna do is we've gotta pull this off, the back off, and we're, we can keep this up front, the back. Set this down. We're gonna go ahead and feed our cable through the back end. So you can see there, and it fits in. And actually it utilizes that uh, square, uh, that three-sided screwdriver again. So we're gonna put that three-sided screw right in top there. And that actually utilizes this perfect. It's actually so nice, so nice and clean. Now remember, we actually have to run the other wires through here. So let's figure out how that all goes. All right, so upon further inspection, it looks like we're gonna actually have to pull this throttle off. So T60, massive bar end nut. All right, so with the bar removed, the bar end, let's go ahead, get this fully removed. 
you're gonna see that the, the throttle is actually gonna come out. So the, the bar end kind of like held it in there. So that's actually interesting. So let's go ahead and remove this all the way. And our throttle, jeez, look at the, look at the threat, Jesus. Ducati doesn't want these to vibrate out. Holy Jesus, mother. All right, so let's go ahead and pull this throttle out. And uh, well, there you go, your, your, uh, your clip-ons if you need to do that. So let's go ahead and set everything down and try to figure this all out. All right, so a little bit of a challenge to get this on. Now what we've done, everything is in by the way, so I just didn't know, I don't wanna take it apart because I don't, don't wanna mess it up. But um, what we've done is the back is sandwiched on, so we ran the cables through here, so that's fine. But what we ended up having to do is we took the uh, throttle, here's the throttle, and you kind of got to work it into the front housing. And once you get it in there, you'll notice that it kind of seats in and snaps in really well. Then you're going to get your throttle tube on, which is here, and then you slide the back uh, cover on. Remember, you've got um, a little uh, screw hole up here, and then the, the the cover is down here. So go ahead and slide this on. And once you get this on, you'll see that basically, um, although the throttle's loose, don't worry about the throttle being loose right now because once you get it on the tube, it's all gonna be steady, right? So go ahead and um, they supplied you with these two bolts here. So go ahead and let's start getting these two bolts all sorted out here and and then the bottom one. So we're just gonna get everything nice and sandwiched in here. All right, so with the three-sided screw in here, don't tighten these all the way down yet. We need a little bit of play in here in order to mount it on here. And then what we're gonna do is grab our bottom mounting plate, which is here. This goes up here. Let's see. All right, and voila, we now have our, uh, basically our Jet Prime uh, ready to roll and uh, the back two bolts are loose. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of our wires and let's go ahead and start sliding this on. So we're gonna separate this just a little bit and you'll see we slide right on. And I'm not gonna tighten it all the way right now because obviously we've gotta get placement, but just snug enough and I'm gonna leave just a little rim here, okay? Because remember, when you guys took it off, there was just a little bit of rim, okay? And then go ahead and tighten these down. Then we're gonna run the cables back around the forks. And then back into our two plugs. So let's go ahead and figure out how we're gonna run these, get them all zip tied down uh, before we get them plugged in. So remember, big plug there, small plug here. Actually, probably now is a really good time to test them. So actually, let's go ahead and plug them in, plug them in, and uh, let's go ahead and turn on the ignition. And yep, we have got a light. You can see in the reflection there, the lights. Yep. And stop, perfect. Okay, so everything seems to be working. Of course, throttle, well actually, you know what? We should probably test the throttle. So let's go ahead and turn it on for a quick minute. Okay, so throttle works. So everything is good. So let's go ahead and tidy up and do some housekeeping here and get everything nice and clean and buttoned up. And then we'll move on to the master. All right, on to the master. Now ignore what I said about uh, tidying this up because remember we have to run this cable down to this plug as well. So uh, Brembo RCS 17. Now what we can do is mount this here. Uh, yes. So let's go ahead and grab our bolts, I'm not sure why that one's got a washer and that one doesn't. Let's see if we need a washer. All right, found a second washer. So let's go ahead and start threading the master on. All right, so with the master on, what we're gonna do is try to level all of this stuff out in about the position that we want. 
And we wanna give ourselves a little bit of space here at the end, okay? And then we wanna give our space just a little bit of space in between the two. So just a little bit of space and then go ahead and let's go ahead and tighten everything down. All right, so we've got everything kind of snugged up. First, what we wanna make sure is that our throttle isn't hanging up. Our throttle is nice and good, okay? Everything is pretty snug, so nothing's really moving right now, but we wanna be able to adjust this later when Bogna is ready to go. So now you can see we've got clearance for our brake. Now, uh, we've got our banjo back here. We're going to reutilize the stock banjo, but Brembo has included a new uh, copper washer spacer. So uh, we're gonna do banjo washer into the, ban or the banjo bolt into there, and then one up top. And then we're gonna go ahead and start threading this in down below once we can find it. So we're gonna go on this side of everything. All right, and then we're gonna just hand tight this for now, but don't forget to tighten this up. I just wanna make sure that we get the banjo pointed in the right direction. So we're gonna hand tighten this pretty good. And then let's go ahead and get that fully tight. So grab your 12 millimeter and get that bolt nice and tight on the banjo. And then let's go ahead and do some housekeeping here and go ahead and get all of these wires nice and tucked and zip tied back up here. One, two, three zip ties, everything nice and clean. And then we're ready to button up the top and add the reservoir and start with the bleeding process. All right, so I didn't film any of the reservoir mounting only because I didn't know which kit. I had two kits, one that actually mounted here and one in this one, and they're both Rizomas. The problem with mounting it here was when you turn the bike, the, the reservoir hit here when it mounted here. So we had to bring it all the way in. So the Rizoma kit came with a, a line, um, a brake line, but it wasn't long enough. So you will need a longer brake line. This actually goes in, you pop off the cap, you'll see the cap at the end of the clip on, on the bar clip on, it pops off and this bolts right in there and your reservoir goes there, it clears, everything fine. So now we're getting ready to bleed the brake system again. So we'll go ahead and fill up the reservoir with our brake fluid and we'll start pumping it through. We'll bleed the brakes on both sides. Come up here to the master, bleed the master. Uh, if you guys haven't seen that, I encourage you guys to watch the first brake video because I walk through how to bleed the system. I'm not gonna do it again just because take so much time to go back and forth and I, and I am alone today. So uh, this Rizoma kit, um, it is, I'll link everything down below, but this is the kit that worked out. This one didn't work out because it didn't position me in the right spot. And then this hose that they included was about an inch too short. So we needed a little bit longer hose, which coincidentally enough I had. So um, let's go ahead and get the brake system bled and everything good. And then we'll do an outro on the video. All right, guys, there we have it. The prime throttle tube and uh, housing with the Brembo RCS 17 non Corsa Corta with the Rizoma uh, brake reservoir relocation. Look at this thing. Holy mama and of course we, at the end we put the performance um technologies um brake lever guard and then again if you guys have followed the whole brake build on this t rotors from brembo and then we have the brembo stylema calipers uh i just went up the street on this thing and oh my god i told i just text bogman and told her i don't ever want to hear you complain about the brakes they are so amazing right now so um get out of the sun uh you east coasters i apologize it's about 80 degrees today here in california but uh the v2 has <clears throat> some more work done exhaust is going on tomorrow so stay tuned for the v2 um and then there's some other stuff that we've got to do to that bike i think we just got to do a parts list so if you guys are interested in this setup email me down below i'll get you over to my parts guy and the parts guy will get you i guarantee you 
the best pricing on this setup. Uh, if you guys wanna just do the top, the top is a good start. It, we kind of went backwards. We did the bottom first just because that's what we had. But I'll tell you, the master makes the difference. So um, if you guys are interested, hit me up down below uh, in the email and uh, we'll get you a full parts list. You guys don't have to do anything. I'll get you over to my guy. I guarantee you he will save you a ton of money on anything you guys need. So hit me up in the email down below. But uh, thank you, V2 is uh, off to exhaust land tomorrow, so stay tuned. But uh, right now, we are getting ready to hook up the Bestum USA carbon fiber build on the S1000 single R. I'm excited for this. As you guys know, uh, there were some issues with the carbon fiber body that we originally were supposed to get or that we did get, but um, that's all gone. Um, but uh, Stay tuned, do the normal, hit the subscribe button, smash the like button, and then ring the bell notification. Bell notification's gonna give you future notification of future content like exhaust. Uh, don't forget, I've got exhaust for the Street Fighter, the most boy bipolar exhaust Street Fighter on YouTube. Uh, this is exhaust number four, I think, so stay tuned. But thank you guys for sticking around for the V2 brake build, and um, we'll see you guys over at the S1000R.